demons wet with joy that is the great thing demons wet with joy as i told you earlier many times that the four powers who have separated themselves from the divine source for the divine work taken upon them the entire burden of ignorance of separation from the divine they are now happy that their task is going to be culminated now all this is in the context of savitri finding her lover satyaman all that thing is in the context of savitri in other words demons weeping with joy oh savitri has found her lover and it is there now the transfiguration and ecstasy can begin from that point on so all these things in the whole whole presentation preface is basically towards what savitri's discovery of satyavan meeting with satyavan is going to achieve this is what is basically presented here in this event and the defeat for which they hoped in vain and glad release from the self chosen doom see self chosen they had taken upon them the burden of the creation without that it would not have happened at all and return into the one from whom they came from whom they came now he says return they are separated from the supreme source they had become their opposite now with the discovery of love the task is done so i don't know how many millennia they must have waited for this to happen you see but now that it is going to happen they are happy this also means that they are going to return into the one they are not going to transform them they are happy to go back their task is done and they are happy to go back and then of course narad enters the palace the queen and the king they receive him he is reaching the palace early morning so maybe he is offered breakfast also <laughs> some fruits some milk or whatever you see <laughs> and then he sings there for an hour untouched by the earthly seas from 8 to 9 he is singing now about the lotus heart of love i have a question about the demons i like this that they are wet, they are weeping this joy uh, like that so Parmit- the demons Yeah. And they are weeping this joy. I yeah. Like, I like that. Yes. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, surely. Yeah. Because the mother says uh, either the um, forces get dissolved because they cannot be transformed or they will be transformed. But now you just said that they will simply go back. They yeah. Be yeah. But that means it's in between. So they will not be transformed they simply go back they they yeah, they will go back yeah means they will na uh, na uh, na uh, you can put it this way they had taken a certain role in the yes. whole process okay. that role is over so therefore they are back yeah so they leave the untransformed things behind yeah but you see when the whole creation goes into another mode yeah. then it, these things need to be either transformed or dissolved and they do neither no 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 they don't have inner there you see this is a process of the cosmic creation how uh, from light came darkness how from life came death 
how from immortality from uh, from uh, uh, bliss came suffering and pain and misery from consciousness how it became in conscience this is the process by which the whole thing has started the four powers consciousness bliss life and uh what else yeah the truth yeah they they have become opposite now now so they, they are the cosmic powers they are not evolutionary powers they are not evolutionary powers they are there they have taken their opposite they have cut out themselves from the supreme therefore they have become opposite yeah i understand but 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 when it says in, in the transformation what's going on now they either have to be transformed okay transformed or they have to be dissolved there is nothing in between no there's no question of transformation process. here you see let yeah, me put it here. let me let me give the other example because death will be transformed and there's a lot of suffering has already given up the body no once once they are Uh, 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 in conscious presence is removed yeah. then automatically all that thing disappears see you take the example of what we have in savitri's case alone now to the end in book 10 canto 4 savitri has vanquished death she has conquered it what happened to death no 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 he wants to go back into the night night refuses to take him he wants to go back into hell hell refuses to take him ultimately what happens he is finding himself into the supreme he is now seeing himself what he was he had taken a certain form for a certain purpose here the supreme himself had taken that form so there is no question of transformation there he has revealed himself now in his true state in his supreme state death and it is that death transform that you want to call it in that sense who grants boost to savitri do this get this get this it and savitri says i want whatever you want to give me i want not for myself but for the soul of the earth now it is not transformation of death it is transfiguration what he calls is transfiguration he had assumed a certain role a certain part to play he had put on he want to call a kind of a cosmic mask to hide himself and remain behind the scene now that mask is removed mask is removed is not transformation then now this is number one what happens to the other three now we have falsehood we have suffering we have unconsciousness yeah. what happens with falsehood no yeah falsehood that's right falsehood yeah, truth is falsehood yeah. Right yeah yeah but then no, no once once that thing is removed automatically You see, as long as they are present here in that form, truth as falsehood, life as death, then all these things will be there. But once they have withdrawn, there is no base for misery, suffering, falsehood. There is no base for them now. Okay, so how do they? Yeah. Because they are not there now, so their role is over, finished. Their role is finished. You see. <laughs> Yeah. It seems to me that when mother says dissolving, it is the same as returning into the one because you cannot go anywhere in this universe. That's, that is understood. Yeah, you know. But you see, the, a lot of nations. He says uh, falsehood. Falsehood. He is not going to give up his body. Yeah, that's right. He will only do it when he has no other choice. Yes. So then, then will he be dissolved or will he be transformed? What will happen? He he does not want to get transformed. Exactly. But so he he can, he can get dissolved. He can disappear. He can disappear. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, like one of the suffering also happens. Yeah, he can disappear. Yeah. Disappear. So it's only yeah. death, basically, yeah. and unconsciousness. Yeah. See, in other words, in other words, he has still a part to play. He has a role to play still. Therefore, he's there. He is here still, not for nothing. It's in the whole process. Actually, the transformation of these four original powers that cannot happen unless you go through the psychic evolutionary process. It is the evolutionary being who is a psychic who can get transformed. So anyway, I mean all this thing is in the context, you see basically the whole, whole thrust is here. Strive for on earth and joy that throbs behind the marvel and the mystery of pain. Marvel and mystery of pain. Pain is a marvel. It has a purpose, function. Bliss has become suffering for a purpose. It's a marvel <laughs> to achieve something. All that thing in the context of lotus heart of love. And naturally a mighty shuddering coil of ecstasy crept through the deep heart of the universe. Naturally when he's singing, all the vibrations will go. See, he says now here, deep heart of the universe. Yeah, it is not that in the palace they are shuddering and happy and that kind of thing. The vibrations are spreading throughout the universe in all the planes of consciousness. In all the planes of consciousness. That is the mystery of the lotus heart of love. Then we have the arrival of Savitri in the palace. As of a swift heart hastening Savitri, that is how she comes. Swift heart hastening. She is impatient to reveal to her parents that she had found the one whom she was looking for. And therefore, naturally she is impatient, swift, she wants to tell immediately. A happy wonder in the fathomless gaze changed with a halo of love. See, halo of love. It is that which has brought out a transformation in Savitri. And that is why her heart has become swift. Not only that, it has the sanction of the gods. It comes with that, you see. And then, of course, she sees now in the company of her parents, the says also there, saw like a rose of marble. That is what Narada is. Rose of marble, a fiery sweetness of the sun of heaven. And then he flung on her his vast immortal look. This is important. In fact, everything is important. <laughs> yeah. Vast immortal look, immortal, yeah. Her love may be in danger, but behind that there has to be the power of immortality. And that is what he is does. Vast Brahat. Embracing everything. That is what is Christ. And then he is asking, who is this that comes? 
he is asking, I mean, he is, he is kind of exclaiming to himself, who is this that comes? Wondering, oh, you have come like that, you see. And she breaks down this glory of enchanted eyes. He has already seen the whole thing. And that is why he has timed his visit to the palace, just her arrival, one hour before that, you see. Earth has gold hued expanses. He is now describing the whole thing here. And all these are mysterious presences in which some spirit's immortal bliss is felt. Everywhere, because of that is there. And they betray the earthborn heart to joy. And then Narada is turning towards Savitri and says, There has thou paused. Yes, I know you have gone there and met your future husband. And marveling, born eyes unknown, or heard a voice that falls that lie, born eyes unknown. Now, Savitri is not aware of it. But Narada is. Unknown is for Savitri. She is human. Something has crept in, has happened, the power of love has opened out. But still, she is going to see through human eyes. She is going to hear through human ears. Why that force that life? Force that life, you see. It has to happen. And then he is, of course, preparing Savitri slowly. Yes, you have been living in a very beautiful, very sweet world of happiness. It is kind of a dream in this earth. You are living as if in a dream world. And therefore, as long as you are in that dream, you are safe. You are safe. But you have to also come out of the dream and live in the context of this world. See things in the context of this world. Therefore, what it means is that the moment you come out of that dream of meeting Satyavan and all that, etc., etc., the moment you come out of it, the safety of the dream is no more there for you. You are going to meet something dangerous, perilous, unhappy. He is already hinting there. Yes, you are living the dream, you are happy there. And then he says, therefore, obviously, thou hast not spoken with the kings of pain. You are living the dream, you have not spoken yet, you have not met the kings of pain. Thou hast not spoken with the kings of pain. It means that, look, Savitri, soon you are going to speak with the kings of pain. He is telling that she has to meet the kings of pain shortly. Life's perilous music rings yet to thy ear far melodic, a rapid grand ascent of song. Yes, you will hear the perilous music also shortly. Please. 